In this video, I want to continue looking at the potential energy function in 1D. So last time we started with a, cons a force that was acting on an object in one dimension. Everything, the, the motion and the force was all along one axis. We limited ourselves to a conservative force, which we defined as a, a function that can be represented as a function of position and is only ever a function of position. That being the case, we could define a function which was the negative antiderivative of the force, and we called that the potential energy function. We didn't particularly give a reason why we would want to do that, except that we could, given that the force was and only a, a defined as a function of position. And then we uh, did that for gravity and spring, identifying that to come up with a proper mathematical representation, we had to define a coordinate system, choose a zero of the coordinate system, as well as choose a location for the zero of potential energy, because that also fixes the uh, choice that fixes the, the mathematical representation because only differences in potential energy have physical meaning. So now what I want to do is come up with a more um, uh, math, a mathematical representation, a more general mathematical representation of the potential energy function. All right, got myself some more space. So the more general relationship is after we define a coordinate system, and remember, I'm still all limiting myself to one dimension at, at the moment. This gives us a mathematical mathematical representation of our force which is f of x a function of position okay at which point we have to define a position which I'll call x0 or x0 where u of x naught is equal to zero. Okay? And that we did that before. Given that um, that that setup, given that we've done that first, our potential energy function now can now be written in general as the negative integral from x naught to x of f of x, I'll put in here prime, dx prime. So if this is something that you, you haven't seen before, what, what exactly is this? So this is now a, my function, my potential energy function uh, over x given its uh, uh, given some force, f of x. So this independent variable here, u of x, the independent variable here is the limit of integration of this integral. And the reason why I have x prime here is simply um, to remind myself that this x right here is different than the this the this x here is different than the limit of integration this x prime is a variable that's going to be integrated over it will not show up in the final relationship but it will be a function of my final relationship will be a, f a function of x and that x that does end up will be this limit of integration so the the point being here is that I have some uh, some function that's defined over all of x called f of x and from it I'm going to come up with another function u of x that's defined over all x um, and that relationship is given by this integral here and so the the uh, independent variable for u of x comes through from this relationship here as the limit of integration while the f of x 
uh, variable is is integrated and it ends up going away. So I I, I don't. <laughs> I don't know if that's clear, but I or if they've seen this sort of thing before. But but this comes up a lot, and I don't want uh, students to be confused by this. Be, um, and we'll use it an example to see where it comes from. Okay, so let let's just work with it. Let's go back to gravity, and use this general form to reproduce what we did before. Okay, so the first thing is to find a coordinate system. Let's put our uh, zero. At the uh, at the ground, positive x-axis is up. So this gives us our function f of x is equal to negative mg. And let's say our coordinate system, I mean our zero of potential energy is at uh, x is equal to zero. So u of zero is equal to zero. So then, given this form here. our potential energy function is equal to negative uh, the location where the potential is equal to zero, so that's zero, up to some arbitrary value of x. And uh, so um, f of x, which in this case is negative mg, then dx prime, that's my integration variable. Okay. So now I just do this integral, which is really quite simple, m minus mg is constant, that comes out, and I get mg, and I'm integrating from 0 to x of d x prime. And so that's just the, you know, there's a 1 in here, so the indefinite integral of the, num of the number 1 is mg, you know, x prime, that's what I'm integrating over, evaluated at the endpoints, is 0 to x. So my result then is mgx minus 0. And so this is exactly what we had before, only now I've been able to generate it from this general expression. And so now you can see my original function f of x was defined over all of x. My, my final function u of x is defined over all of x. And I integrate over x from my original function to uh, come up with u of x. So we had that, I have that before somewhere, maybe that one went away, okay. So let's do that, that example of gravity again, where I had a different uh, zero. Okay. So I had some table at some height h, and so in this case, my force is, is the same, it's equal to negative mg, uh, in this case, my, um, uh, let's see, my zero of potential energy, that's what I wanted to change, at x equals h is equal to zero. So in this case, my zero of potential energy is here, where my zero of my coordinate system is here. Right, so this is, this is u is equal to zero at this location. Okay, so now what this is telling me is that my general function u of x is the integral from the location where the potential is equal to zero, which in this case is h, to some arbitrary value x. And I integrate over the function, oh it's a negative out here, negative mg d x prime, x prime is my dummy variable is what I call that, that I integrate over, pull out the negative mg, which gives me mg h to x dx prime, which is equal to mg x prime evaluated between h and x, which gives me mg x minus h. Okay, which is exactly uh, where, we, where we have it, yeah, here, oh yeah, here, here we have it, which is what we had before. There is where the potential energy is zero at u of h, and here is, it's where it's zero at x is equal to zero. Sorry, here it's zero, or x is h, here it's zero where x is zero. And so this general form then gave us the uh, 
can give us the relationships every time once we establish our coordinate system, our force, and the position x naught where the potential energy is equal to zero. Okay, so to so wrap it up, let's let's do the spring because we can spring. So in this case, again, we have to make sure we get our coordinate system so we have the proper mathematical representation of our force. And so I'm going to say the, uh, our coordinate is <laughs> plus zero. This is x, and this is our equilibrium. So I'm saying x is equal to zero at equilibrium. Given this choice of coordinate system, then my spring force is equal to minus kx. Of course, it's a vector, but we're just in one direction, in one dimension. And so the minus sign takes care of the direction of the of the vector. And now we're going to say that our potential is equal to zero at x is equal to zero. We're going to say our potential is zero at equilibrium. And so now using our general form u of x is equal to the negative integral from the location where the potential is equal to zero which is x is equal to zero to some arbitrary x uh, the function which is negative k x prime our force function dx prime, where now I, I put in x prime for x because that's my dummy variable that I'm integrating over. My independent variable for my potential energy function is, is the limit of integration on the integral. Okay, so now I can do this integral. Uh, k is a constant, so I pull out negative k, gives me a positive k, integrate 0 to x of x prime dx prime. So that's k one-half x prime squared evaluated between zero and x and so that's equal to one-half k x squared u of x that's our potential energy given our choice of coordinate system zero at equilibrium and our choice of zero of potential energy which we also chose for this point at equilibrium Okay, so now we have a, a general relationship that gives us um, uh, our potential energy function given our force. If we want to go backwards, then remember the uh, potential energy is just the negative antiderivative. So our force function in one dimension, again, everything's one dimension, is the negative derivative with respect to x of our potential energy function. So, of course, here, then, um, if for a spring, then, of course, u of x is uh, 1 half kx squared, so f of x is equal to 1 half k2x, uh, negative, right? Negative, sorry. Negative, then negative kx. Then for gravity, uh, a potential energy, then if u of x is equal to mgx, then our force, which is the negative derivative, is negative mgx to the zero. All right, so uh, this is now a simple way to get our force uh, from an initial potential energy. And at this point, it sort of highlights now uh, what we have um, swept under the rug, which is a problem limiting everything to one dimension. The potential energy function, I'm <laughs> doing my stuff from before, this is a scalar, and this is a vector. The derivative of a scalar is also a scalar, and so I have to I have to worry about that when I go to three dimensions. All of that matters when we work in one dimension because this is essentially the component. The only thing that matters the, for the direction is the sign, and all of that is is uh, t taken care of by the sign, 
in this case. Um, but we should be worried that I have a, an equation here that relates a vector to a scalar. And this we have to be much more careful about when we extend this idea to three dimensions.